So I'm going to be going through Colossians 1, some verses in Colossians 1, and then into chapter 2. It's a privilege to be preaching to you this morning. I'm Landry. If you did not know me, uh, now you do on camera. Can we pray? Then we're going we're gonna to get in this message. God, thank you that you're here. I pray for everyone as, we, as they listen to this sermon that they would, uh, yeah, that we learn something new about you, about what the scripture is saying. Uh, we invite you into the room that whoever is listening to in their living room or bedroom, whatever, wherever they're at, or in the, in the church right now. We thank you for this, God. Amen. Hey, so whether you're at home or in the church, man, really good to have you here. Really, really good to have you listening to us. Let's read. Uh, Paul's been encouraging everyone to bring their Bibles or get their Bibles out. So if you, you can have it on your phone too, but let's, let's get in the Word this morning. Let's keep continue to find out what God is going gonna, gonna to be saying to us through Colossians. I'm going to read the verses to you. I'm going to start in verse 23 of chapter 1 in Colossians. I'm going to read all the way to uh, um, chapter 2, verse 5. So let's do this. Here we go. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. Verse 24, I'm glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I'm participating this in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is a secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. Verse 28. So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard depending on Christ's power that works within me. I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and the church of Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met, uh, met me personally. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I'm telling you this, this is verse four now, I'm telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you, and I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith in Christ is strong. Well, there you have it. I'm wrapped up. I'm done. I just read to you some good verses. You can take this away, and I hope God inspires you. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach from this today. You don't get off the hook that easy. It's easy as I'm re- I've, I've had all week to read this. I've had all week to go through this and more. But it's, I, I find it's easy sometimes to kind of, what's the right word, almost uh, glaze over when I read Paul's writing and pick and choose what I want to take away from it. I know about you. Um, but even if you, just, if you just were listening to me there reading through, you probably had some things jump out at you or like, oh, I get that. And other things were irrelevant to you and you read it. But I feel in this, if, if, I'm gonna, if we're really going to take some things away here, we got to dig in a little bit more. There's massive things going on in the world at the time where Paul has written this letter. History altering, world changing things happening in these moments. There are some easy truths and we're going to go through them. I'll come back to them later. But I think I want, I want us to look at the bigger picture here. We're going we're gonna to think bigger and look at it through a lens, not really up close, but also a little bit higher up. So you can see what Paul is getting at and the excitement that's coming through in the text right now. So we're going to jump around um, a little bit. I wrote wrote two sermons for tonight, uh, for this morning. I wrote two whole ones, so I I brought one, uh, but I I rewrote it this this afternoon while I was was preparing. I said, and God was speaking a whole new thing. So I'm excited to see how that comes about. Have you ever been around... uh, a woman that's recently been proposed to, like she's newly engaged. The ring is on her finger. 
And if you've, if the excitement is in the room, usually the ring is like utmost and center, like it's for everyone to see. Like even if she says, hey, good to see, the ring somehow pops up uh, and is visible all the time. And that does, it, so if you're at a gathering, which uh, I don't know how many of you are at, but remember those gatherings you had when the, someone was there and they just got engaged, everyone in the room probably knew about it, whether they cheered or whether she was telling everyone personally, even if people were in the room and they didn't want to know. She probably told them. It's hard to contain that excitement when someone is just engaged. I want you to know in this, when Paul is writing this, he's on a mission, tunnel vision, 110% sold out to tell everyone about what Christ has just done in him. He's going town by town, city by city, uh, proclaiming the transformational truth that set him free and is then setting thousands of people free in these moments and in this time. So you can see multiple times in this passage, almost frustratingly if you're reading it, why is he always talking about himself? Why is he always sharing about what he is doing? about me, about I, the language comes through. In verse 23, the good news is being preached all over the world. I, Paul speaking, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. In verse 24, I'm glad when I suffer. In verse 25, God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming the entire message to you. Verse 24, Nine, that's why I work and struggle so hard. First, uh, chapter two, verse one, I want you to know how much I have agonized. And later on, I want you to have complete confidence. It seems that Paul, if you're just reading, man, this, this guy has, it wants everyone to know, is he bragging about what he's doing? Is he trying to make a point of how hard he's working and how much he has gone through just so that people can know. I want us to fully grasp the language going on here because it totally affects the way you look at the, re- the rest of this text. We can't, we can't go further without seeing it. So he, we, you need to know that Paul saw firsthand what Jesus could do. He's the guy that experienced Jesus on the road, a personal encounter face-to-face with Jesus. He experienced it. And then he began to see what Jesus was doing as he followed the calling that God put on his life. He didn't just see it once, he saw it again and again and again. The gospel burned in his heart and changed everything about who he was. Literally, if you read, if you go back to Acts, even the name change about what he was doing, his career, how he talked, how he thought. The gospel changed everything about Paul. He needed everyone to know about this. He needed everyone he talked to, to hear about it. He wanted everyone to know and experience that transformational power of the gospel of who Jesus Christ is. This is why he keeps mentioning, this is what I'm doing, because he's seeing the excitement of what it's happening, what it's doing around the world. Literally, what Paul is seeing is is the gospel spreading to the entire human race. And this is what he's trying to get the church of Colossae to see in this moment, that this is exciting. These are exciting times. I need you to know how powerful the gospel is and all that's happening. But he has to put it through a letter. He can't, he can't post about it on his Instagram story. He can't go live and share and go to each town and talk to everyone and interview everyone. Look what God is doing here. No, he has to get it out in letters to different churches. In the Expositor's Bible or Bible Support, uh, one, of the, um, one of the commentary says this, we may briefly consider what was the substance of this grand mystery which thrilled Paul's soul. It is the wonderful fact that all barriers were broken down and that Christ dwelt in the hearts of these Colossians. He saw that the proof and the prophecy of the worldwide destination of the gospel. No wonder that his heart burned as he thought of the marvelous work which God had wrought by him. For there is no greater revolution in the history of the world than that accomplished through him, the cutting loose of Christianity from Judaism and widening the church to the width of the race. 
What a powerful way to sum it up. The gospel burned in his heart. It changed everything about who he was and what he was doing. And he needed this church to know and hear about it. He needed them to grasp the fullness of what was happening. And that he was willing to do anything. He was suffering. He was agonizing. He felt called. But the world was literally changing because of who Jesus was and the gospel that was being made known. That's really exciting stuff. The excitement needs to be picked up when you read this text. It needs to come through before we carry forward. We need, you need to see how pumped this guy is about Jesus because that's what is coming through all the time. He's not bragging, I don't think. He's actually trying to paint the picture to them. Have you ever met anyone that's given everything up? Anyone that's ever met, that they've given everything up for the gospel? Have you ever chatted with someone, they, it changed their life so much, maybe they moved or they sold everything. You don't meet too many people, but when you do, you kind of double take and go, wait, what, what have you done? This is insane. Their lives and the way they think, the way they talk, they need everyone to know about what God did in them, so they're willing to risk everything and their, their um even their careers to the point so people can know. My, one of my friends when I, I met when I used to live in Australia, he, this happened to him. And, and he, did, he gave up everything and moved to this remote island. I can't tell you where because I don't want, it's very, uh, I, what he does is, is risky what he does right now because of, uh, it's a group of people that it's 99.9% of a different religion on that island. And what he did was he went and bought a plot of land. He, sold, he, he, he raised enough money, he got enough money to buy land on this island and started a little um, breakfast place as tourists on it as they went to do a hike uh, at one of these mountains so that he could reach all the locals in the village for Jesus. It's, it's pretty inspiring to think of someone who, who had a career that they moved to the middle of the jungle on an island that takes so long to get to, and he bought a couple acres just so he could start meeting the villagers around him, so that they could start hearing about Jesus. They could hear the gospel. I think for some of us, the excitement of the gospel has been dulled in your life. Can I be honest with you? And I need you to be honest with yourself. Has the gospel been dulled in your life? The excitement of what Jesus did for you, has it dissipated? Over the years, have you lost sight of what it means to you and what it's done for you? Let's talk about the, the mystery or secret that comes up here. Because as you read through, you may have picked up on that, whatever tra uh, different translations say the different word, but it's mystery or secret that Paul has given everything up for. It comes up in Colossians 1, 25, 27. You first need to pick up the, the excitement so then you could grasp what Paul is so excited about. He says, God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. What a responsibility, what an honor, what a privilege to carry that. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past. But now it has been revealed to God's people for God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is a secret. Christ lives in you. This is big. This is really big. This is changing the world big, these moments. It's not just for Paul. It's not just for the church of Colossae. It's also for you and me. It's for the Gentiles. This is how big it is. These moments, these, the, the, the gospel being revealed in this way through what Jesus did on the cross affected us today that we have access to it. This is something that as Paul wrote, the generations had not, they had not seen this past. For centuries, people didn't fully know. And then it went public. It went public right here. At this time, this as Paul says, is Christ in you, that, that the secret is out. The mystery has now been revealed. The veil that was over the uh, people, Moses in the Old Testament, now everyone can see. And people can see that no one thought deserved to know and all can know now. This is why Paul is so pumped. Everyone can know Jesus and actually have him in their hearts. 
not just the Jews, but for the Gentiles. Paul is telling the church that the past, it's old, it's, it's done. Paul is telling these religious people, the ones, you guys, we, we need to get it. We need to grasp it. I've had all week to ponder on it. And so God has been speaking to me, but you need to let it sink into your hearts that in the past, no one had access. One person once a year could go into the Holy of Holies and that's as close as they could get. But then Paul starts preaching and this is why he was so persecuted that they can have Jesus in their hearts and before they couldn't even go into the room to see him and know him. This is huge. This is why the Jews hate him. They're like, wait, what? No, no, no one can. Who are you talking about? And this is not for these people. No, with Paul is saying all can know, all can hear, all can understand. Doesn't matter what their background is. There is no more restrictions anymore. There is no rituals. There is no uh, all the rules to get in the right place. It's open for you to understand right now. This is big. This is why he's so excited. The mystery has been revealed. Moving on in verse 28, Paul says this. Are you excited? Do you I, I, I feel that God is stirring something in your heart, whether you're in church live or whether you're in your living room? I hope the words of this passage and I hope the impact of the gospel, what Jesus has done for you is being stirred up and becoming more and more relevant for you. Because that's what I wanted of this. This is what Paul wanted for the the church then. He wanted them to understand the greatness of what God had done for them and that Jesus was close. He was in them and he wanted to ground them in that. And that's what we need to pull from this as well this morning. He says this really quickly after just dropping this bomb on them, that the mystery is here. Christ is in you. He said, uh, uh, it's so casually it feels like, so we tell others about Christ. You know what Jesus has done, many of you. You've experienced him in your heart. He's transformed so many aspects of your life. So you tell others about Christ. Don't you see the runway here? The excitement is there. The facts are out. The stories are being heard. The gospel is hitting the hearts of many. And then Paul says, so we tell others. It's all about, it's, he's used language of I. I have been doing this. I've been doing that. And then he exhorts the church and says, so we go tell others. Who told you? Who shared the gospel to you? Who invited you? Who are you telling? Who are you sharing with? Who are you inviting to? My mom and my dad, they showed me who Jesus, they told me about Jesus. And it, as a seed planted, I grew and I matured and it started to transform my life. And just think back to that, that newly engaged person, how excited they are for everyone to know. It doesn't matter even if they care about it or not, but they need you to see that ring and hear that story. Are you that way when it comes to the gospel and talking about who Jesus is? Because you know it, you have it, and it should be impacting you more. It should be impacting us more. I invited Russell Crowe to church once. And it was awesome. For real. I, I met Russell Crowe. And I need you to believe me. Because I did. And I don't even have a picture because I was so nervous. Russell Crowe is by far my favorite actor of all time. And one time at a BC Lions game of all places, he was sitting really close to me. So I was like, or my wife, Abby, was like, if you don't meet him now, you're going to regret this your whole life. So I went over and he wasn't even, he, other people were going to talk to him and he wasn't even looking at them. And I was so afraid and so nervous. But then I had this moment, and this is why I'm sharing the story, so I'm not just dropping a big name for you to know and you can be so excited about me, which is cool as well. I'm not, it is cool. He did, he was in Gladiator, so just wanted you to know that. Um, but there was this moment right before I walked up on my, I decided in that moment, I, I, I knew I had just come back from five, four years of living overseas doing full-time mission work. So my, my role was to proclaim the gospel. Like that's what I was going around country to country to do. And so I, in that moment, I just felt, 
I don't know how to explain it, but I felt that if I was going to go talk to him, I was going to talk to him like I had decided to do for my life to tell others about who God was or give them an opportunity to hear about the gospel. And this was, that made me even more nervous in this moment. So I walked over to him. Of course, I had to pay respect for who he was and say, you were awesome in Gladiator because he was and other movies that I loved. And then he did, wasn't looking at me. Then I, 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 there was a connection all of a sudden. I found out he was staying uh, at the building right beside the church I was working at, a coastal church. And I was like, oh my goodness, well, what are you doing tomorrow morning? I said, out of instinct, because the next morning was Sunday. And he looked at me and I'll, I was like, oh, this could go either of two ways. And, and he said, I'm not doing much. I'm like, well, you should come to church because I work at a church and you should come to one of the services. I wasn't really thinking about what I was saying because I was nervous, but I think God was using it. Who knows? For me, maybe more than him, I don't know. But I said, you should come to the 11 uh, a.m. service. There's three services. This one will be more busy so you can maybe slide in and out, but you should come to the 11 a.m. service. I, and he said, okay, that sounds great. We shook hands. It was the best moment ever. Fast forward to the next day at church, all the staff were buzzing. I told my friends, Russell Crowe, might be coming today. We, are, we had lookouts posted. Everyone was watching and no one saw him. I, had to, I was doing youth stuff, so I wasn't in the building for that service. But here's the crazy part of the story. After all, we were kind of let down. No, he didn't come. And then all of a sudden, the, the electric guitar player came down. A few of us staff were talking and I hadn't talked to him about anything. He goes, guys, it was so crazy. I think Russell Crowe was in the service when we were doing worship. And we like, I literally almost fell on the ground. I couldn't believe it. And then the joke just started taking off. We're like, I invited Russell Crowe to church and the, he got saved. And that was the joke, but we don't know that. I don't know. I don't know. I know the gospel was presented that morning. I'm telling you this story because in my life it wasn't in, I, I, I want my life to every person I talk to there is an opportunity and there is a chance where I am telling them about Christ we want to present them to God it says later on in verse 28 we know who God is we know what he can do we need to present more people to God and then we let God do what only he can do. Can I challenge a few of you for a second here? Because I just felt like I want to push some of you for like, oh man, Landry, I'm, I know this. I have a lot of friends and they know I'm a Christian. That is not good enough for the excitement of the gospel that we are seeing from Paul right here. Paul mentions this word, a mystery, a secret. But this word, as, uh, as you dig in, the scholars are saying this. It's not being used in a manner that you think might come to mind. It's not saying that it's, a, it's something being concealed, how it's coming about, the language and the root of this word is actually something that is being proclaimed. That's how this word is coming through. When Paul mentions it here, also in Ephesians, it's something that is being proclaimed by Paul. So I love the opportunity to meet people and then become friends with you and then to move slowly, oh, they hear you go to church and you have this long, long, long journey with them years down the road. And I'm not saying that's bad, but I am saying for some of you who are sitting, who are evangelists, who do have this anointing to tell people about Jesus, about the truth, to show Christ to others, you need to share it. You need to be bold. Sometimes we make excuses by saying, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm waiting for them to notice something is different about me. You guys, that's great, but we also need to tell others about Jesus. Because if he's changed everything for you and me, then others deserve to know it. Not years down the road, ask if they could come to an Alpha. Like, sure, that would be great. I've actually been hoping you would ask me if you could come to an Alpha. No, we need to, they should have already known about Jesus years before from you. Be bold, be courageous. That's enough for that, that for you. I just wanted to tell you that. Paul shares his breakthrough thought of Christ in you. We're going to land here for just a minute. For us, what does this mean? That we have Jesus in our hearts. This is what it means. Yes, but how is this changing the way you live? Christ in you, Christ in us. How is this affecting how you think, how you act, how you talk? Paul reminded earlier in the chapter who he was referring to. 
who he is referring to who is in us. Pastor Paul talked about this in the last couple of weeks, but I'm going to read out because this has new meaning as we go through this current text, this poem that Paul writes to the church in Colossians 15, to, uh, chapter 1, 15 to 20. I'm going to read it to you, but you should read it too. Christ is a visible image of the invisible God. This is Jesus in us. This is Christ in us. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. This is Christ in us, remember. I, I hope this is hitting home. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over who rise from the dead. He is first in everything for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This is who is in us. Church, you cannot glaze over this too fast and forget that this is why Paul is so excited. This is why he is preaching so radically. And this is why he's willing to suffer because the, the Christ he is preaching about that is in us, that we have had the privilege to know, holds creation together. Everything was for him and by him. Everything was saved through his blood, through his death on the cross. God was pleased to be in Christ. This should get all of us very excited. All of us have access to all you need at this moment because Jesus is in your hearts. Whatever place you're in, whatever challenges you are facing, you have Jesus in you the creator, the savior. And if there is anyone who's watching this right now in, in person or online, can I just tell you, if you don't know Jesus, if you've never invited Jesus into your heart, it's accessible for you. It is for you. You need to know you are seen by him. You are loved by him. Your sins are forgiven through his death on the cross. He did everything so you can have life in him a life filled with hope that only he can bring to you, a hope that only comes through Christ. You can have that. It's accessible to you. I want to pray with you. I'm going to pray at the end with you. So just hang on to that. Because this is huge for us. And lastly, I want to close with this. Back to the very first verse I started with, but you, Paul says this, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand firm in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. Can I say that again? You must continue to believe this truth and stand firm in it. Church, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to those who've been believers for a long time. The assurance you received, don't drift away from the gospel. Don't drift away. You need to stand firm. The world is a wild place right now, if you haven't noticed. Many of you have gone through multiple rounds of breakdowns by now. Multiple rounds of, of panic attacks, anxiety attacks, new levels you've never been through of frustrations, anger, sickness, and hurt and pain through this COVID time has, has exaggerated it and has made things so much harder for so many of us. But can we, can we see this and hear this to hold on, to stand firm, to stand in the truth of the good news that God is for you, that Jesus Christ is in you, that all these things taking place and all these unknowns and all these frustrations, He, Christ, is in you. And you need to hang on to Him, hang on to this truth. Don't hang on to other things you've probably realized they're not working. You need to hang on to the truth that is Christ, the good news. And he left the Holy Spirit to be in us, to be with us, to journey with us every single day. So let's remind ourselves of that this morning. Let's remind ourselves that the Holy Spirit is here, that despite everything is going on, 
that we can stand firm in this gospel, this unshakable truth that radically changed the world for the good. That's why Paul is preaching it with such passion and changed the lives of these towns and these cities and the whole human race heard about the gospel through the passion that started through Jesus' death on the cross and Paul picked it up and preached it forward. So can we pray to wrap up this morning? I hope you feel stirred. I hope you feel encouraged. I hope you want to go and read further as you've grasped what Paul is preaching about and through the lens we were talking about. So can we pray this morning? Can we, can we invite the Holy Spirit? Can we invite the Holy Spirit to reveal to you more about Jesus who is in your heart? Come Holy Spirit. We invite you into our homes. We invite you to come and reveal new levels of the gospel to us. Thank you that we know for many that know this truth, that grew up in the church. I pray for ones that have been dulled this. I pray, God, you would sharpen their knowledge of the word and God, just stir a passion in them for all you've done. God, I pray for ones who have just been, uh, God, they've just been wiped out in this season. I pray that they would hang on again. They would stand firm in this truth. God, you'd remind them of what you have done for them and the excitement would stir and just that extra bit of strength to hang on. And I want to personally pray for everyone here, anyone here that hasn't received this gospel, hasn't received this truth. I pray right now in their hearts. And as I'm praying, you can just, re, you can just say words like these, God, I thank you for what you've done. Jesus, I want to invite you into my heart. I want to live my life for you. And I want to follow you. Thank you that you've forgiven me of my past and of my sins. I love you, Jesus. So God, just bless us as we go forward. Be with us and thank you for your word that is alive and not just for a letter for a church back in the day, but it can speak to us right now. We thank you for that. In your name we pray, amen.